there is a common notion that Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought is something that only exists in China or can only work at a certain historical period under Chinese conditions. This stems from the thinking that it is merely a national application of Marxism to the Chinese conditions, rather than identifying new universal contradictions that still exist today. This is especially so relating to the Cultural Revolutions assessments, which are of universal significance. It was the first political mass revolt against the new revisionist bourgeoisie present in the party and in the state. This quotation from 1970 sums up the matter well. Mao Zedong thought is the Marxism-Leninism of our era, the era in which imperialism is heading for its total collapse and in which socialism marches on towards victory in the whole world. It is the Marxism-Leninism of the era in which modern revisionism is the concrete force of bourgeois ideology and of class collaboration in the midst of the world's proletariat forces. Most people know that Marxism-Leninism is more than just Marxism in Russia. Sometimes people don't know exactly what it is, but it is Marxism in the era of imperialism. So too then, Marxism-Leninism Mao Zedong thought is more than just Marxism in China, but it is Marxism in the era when imperialism is beginning to collapse and the bourgeoisie is left to having to undermine the communist movement from within. This is the era which we still inhabit now. A great example of the bourgeoisie using this revisionism is Breadtube, who have wholeheartedly embraced communist stereotypes created by the bourgeoisie, and in doing so, serve them by alienating communists from the working masses, who will look at people like Breadtube in disgust. Here's another quote. Mao Zedong's qualitative development of a science of Marxism-Leninism raised it to a new stage. Lenin analysed the development of capitalism to its highest and final stage, which is imperialism. Mao Zedong developed Marxism-Leninism to a new and higher stage in the areas of global struggle against revisionism and, critically, in finding in theory and practice the method of continuing the revolution under the dictatorship of the proletariat, which prevents the restoration of capitalism and continues the advance towards communism. He also gave us the idea of people's war, surrounding the cities from the countryside, with armed struggle as the main form of struggle, and the army led by the party as the main form of organisation of the masses, mobilising the peasantry, especially the poor peasants, carrying out the agrarian revolution and building a united front under the leadership of the Communist Party. Now, not all countries need to have a peasantry as such to have this rural-urban divide, where some are further away from the polity and thus more open to our ideas. Mao also taught us about the new democratic revolution against imperialism, feudalism and bureaucrats' capitalism, and about establishing the joint dictatorship of the revolutionary classes led by the proletariat and the communist party as the necessary stage before the socialist revolution, which is what must immediately follow the victory of this first stage of the revolution. Mao put forward the notion of three magic weapons, the party, the army and the united front, the indispensable instruments for making a revolution in every country in accordance with its specific conditions and the path of revolution. Mao also made philosophical developments to dialectical materialism. He asserts that the struggle between opposites is ceaseless and absolute, and he applied this understanding to the analysis of the relationship between theory and practice, stressing that practice is both the sole source and the ultimate criterion of theoretical knowledge. Mao said the people, and the people alone, of a motive force in the making of world history. He formulated the mass line, take the ideas of the masses, scattered and unsystematic ideas, and concentrate them. Through study, turn them into concentrated and systematic ideas. Then go to the masses, 
and propagate and explain these ideas until the masses embrace them as their own, hold fast to them and translate them into action and test the correctness of these ideas in such action. Mao explained that in this way, matter, or their situation, can be transformed into consciousness, and consciousness, even if the conclusions are incorrect, that sense of intuition can be also transformed into matter, and hence the correct application in material reality. Mao Zedong led the international struggle against modern revisionism spearheaded by Khrushchevite revisionists. He defended the communist ideological and political line against the modern revisionists and called upon the genuine proletarian revolutionaries to break with them and forge parties based on Marxist-Leninist Mao Zedong thought. Mao analysed the positive achievements of the construction of socialism in the USSR and whilst Mao defended the great contributions of Stalin, he also summed up some of Stalin's errors, especially in the handling of contradictions between ourselves and the enemy and amongst the people. And he applied these materialist dialectics to the analysis of the contradictions of socialist society. Mao taught that the party must play the vanguard role before, during and after the seizure of political power, which means leading the proletariat in the struggle for communism. He developed the understanding of how to preserve the proletarian revolutionary character of the party through waging an active ideological struggle against bourgeois and petty bourgeois influences in its ranks. The ideological remoulding of the party members, criticism and self-criticism, and waging struggle against opportunists and revisionist lines in the party. Mao taught that once the proletariat seizes power, and the party becomes the leading force within the socialist state. The contradiction between the party and the masses emerges, and it is a concentrated expression of the contradictions marking socialist society as a transition between capitalism and communism. Mao developed the Leninist thesis that politics is the concentrated expression of economics, showing that under the socialist society, the correctness of the ideological and political line determines whether the proletariat actually owns the means of production. On the other hand, he pointed out that the rise of revisionism therefore means the rise of a bourgeoisie, that it would be easy for capitalist roaders to set up the capitalist system if they come to political power. He concluded that the superstructure, consciousness, can transform and reinforce or erode the base, and with political power develop the productive forces. Mao Zedong initiated and led the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution, where hundreds of millions of people rose up to overthrow the capitalist roaders who had emerged from within the socialist society and who were especially concentrated in the leadership of the party itself, such as Liu Xiaoqi and Deng Xiaoping. Um, Mao led the proletariat in challenging the capitalist roaders and imposing the interests, outlook and will of the great majority in every sphere that, even in social society, had still remained the private sector of the exploiting classes and their supporting way of thinking. Local Tu Huangdi may have been rebranded with a hammer and sickle, but acted the same way they always had done in an entrenched political culture. It was Mao's so-called personality cult, and the ability for people to hold everyone accountable to Mao and his quotations that gave people personal dignity and power and meant that they could challenge the local party bosses without being it, without being branded as a counter-revolutionary with these bosses who equated their own personal power with the authority of the party. Now the ordinary people could appeal to Mao and every party official at every level was accountable to what Mao had said. The Cultural Revolution prevented the capitalist restoration in China for a decade and led to great socialist transformations in the economic base, as well as in education, literature and art, scientific research and other parts of the superstructure. Under Mao's leadership, the masses dug away at the soil which allows capitalism to grow, such as the bourgeois right in the party 
and the three great differences between town and country, between worker and peasant, and between mental and manual labour. Mao grasped the dialectical relationship between the necessity of expert revolutionary leadership and the need to arouse and rely on the revolutionary masses from below to implement the proletarian dictatorship. In this way, the strengthening of the proletarian dictatorship was also the most extensive and deepest exercise in proletarian democracy ever achieved in the world. Lenin said, only he is a Marxist who extends the recognition of class struggle to the recognition of the dictatorship of the proletariat. In the light of the Cultural Revolution led by Mao, this has been further clarified. There is an objective existence of class, of antagonistic class contradictions, of the bourgeoisie in the party, and of the continuation of the class struggle under, dict under the dictatorship of the proletariat, to which class struggle will necessarily be applied throughout the whole period of socialism until communism. This is Mao Zedong thought. As Mao stated, lack of clarity on this question will lead to revisionism. Deng Xiaoping's reform and opening up, or attempts to redefine terms, in no way negates Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. All the achievements and lessons of the great proletarian cultural revolution, rather, this defeat confirms Mao's thesis on the nature of socialist society and the need to continue the revolution under the dictatorship of the proletariat. Comrades, if ever in doubt, go to the source material at the time. Were they claiming Mao Zedong thought to be a national application or a third stage? Consider this quotation. Mao Zedong thought and Marxism Leninism are one and the same thing. Mao Zedong thought not only adheres to the universal truth of Marxism-Leninism, but also adds much new content to the treasure house of Marxism-Leninism. Therefore, we should not separate Mao Zedong thought from Marxism-Leninism, as if the two were different things. That's taken from Correctly Disseminate Mao Zedong Thought, 25th of March, 1960. And the old favourite. Comrade Mao Zedong is the greatest Marxist-Leninist of our era. He has inherited, defended and developed Marxism-Leninism with genius, creatively and comprehensively, and has brought it to a higher and completely new stage. Mao Zedong's thought is Marxism-Leninism of the era in which imperialism is heading for total collapse and socialism is advancing to worldwide victory. It is a powerful ideological weapon for opposing imperialism and for opposing revisionism and dogmatism. And that's taken from forward to the second edition of the quotations from Chairman Mao, 1966. Thank you all kindly for your attention, comrades. And until next time, farewell. Come on.